This week finally brings us our official drop rates as well as new changes to Varlamor again. Let's get into it. More tweaks and drop rates. So it looks like we were a little bit off on the Perilous Moons. Each moon gives you a 1 out of 56 chance to get an item from their drop table. But apparently defeating all three of them gives you another 1 out of 56 chance at getting any item. So that makes your overall odds instead of 1 out of 20 be 1 out of 14. So that makes my 40 chests without seeing a single drop hurt even more. But good to see that there is a duplicate protection system in place, so we won't get duplicates until you have completed the set. And they gave us a nice image for the Colosseum drop rates as well as everything in text, but this looks better. So the pet is rolled at 1 out of 200 chance upon completing wave 11. The uniques are set to a base rate of 10. The toenails take up 1, Sunfire takes up 3, and the rest of the slots go to Echo Crystals. And the Echo Crystals have a bonus 1 out of 10 chance to give either 2 or 3 crystals instead of just 1. Sunfire Fanatic Armor works also like they updated the moon's drops to be. You'll more than likely get pieces that you do not have over pieces that you already have until you complete sets, in which case it goes back to random. And apparently the lowest wave that you can roll for a unique is wave 7, because upon completing wave 6 you have a 1 out of 108 chance to get a unique. So you can either farm wave 6 about 700 times, or get to wave 12 about 200 times to complete everything it seems. At least if you're lucky and going on rate that is. And now to the actual updates. Coliseum I won't be able to speak too much on, have only touched it about once or twice, but it looks like they fixed the range warbanders to let them hit more than ones. In order to compensate, they reduce the melee's max hit. The glory modifiers are actually going to work appropriately now. It looks like the random NPCs that could be found sometimes in the Colosseum are going to be fixed so they will no longer be there. They fix the monster examine whenever you use it on the Fortis Colosseum NPCs. Instead of only being able to trade in the quiver at a 1 out of 200 chance for the pet, you can now talk to Minimus to also trade it for 4000 Sunfire Splinters. And the Wave 1 Sunfire Splinter farming has been nerfed, but they've also increased the amount that you'll get from Waves 9 to 12. The first wave got a 20% nerf, so instead of 100, you're looking at 80, but that should still put it around the 4 to 5 mil an hour mark. However, with this change, as well as being able to trade in the Quivers for the Splinters, it seems like doing a full completion of the Coliseum will give you more Splinters overall if you trade in your extra Quivers. Or at least I would hope so. And more Perilous Moon changes. The Eclipse boss at low HP will no longer be taking as many ones whenever you attack it. Good to see that fixed. The Sulphur Nagawa special attack isn't going to bump them out of combat anymore, so it should make farming them for their drop a little more comfortable. Glad I haven't gone for that yet. The Ring of Recoil is going to correctly lose charges when you fight the moons. They removed a delay from sipping tea from the camps of the Perilous Moons. Removal of the Force Camera movement whenever you're going around their dungeon. Didn't even know you could escape from the boss fight, but yes, you can now have a quick escape as the default option for the stairs to leave the moon bosses. The lore of the dungeon is that it's supposed to be newly discovered, so they are removing the diary entries detailing its potions during the quest, only upon revisiting the area. It is now consistently possible to kill Eclipse Moon during the clone phase, even with single hitting weapons. I didn't think that was a bug, I just thought you weren't able to kill the moons during their special attacks, only whenever you go back into the moon rotation cycles. So we can actually just kill it in the middle of its mimic attack now? Nice! They finally fixed the fishing minigame during the Perilous Moons. With your net in the right place, you're guaranteed one fish. And if you have it in the right place and succeed the roll, you get two fish plus the XP. Maybe we'll start fishing now rather than only hunting the lizards. And they added on a stab attack style onto the dual Makahuhiti. No, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that right. Then we get to move on to our general changes. Falconry can now be bought for a one-time fee of 500,000 whenever you use it on Matthias. There was a bug fixed on the Hunter Guild teleport with the Hunter skill cape and Max capes. Apparently that's why you were no longer able to teleport is because it was still thinking about your Chinchampa teleports. So it seems like they've separated them into two different categories now. Huntsman's kit will let you store all of your Hunter items, except they have removed Black Chinchampas from being able to put into it. That's one moneymaker I'll never be able to try, but I was interested in. I'm just not lucky yet on obtaining the Hunter Kit. Rumors were tweaked, so you're less likely to go dry for any of the drops. A bug was fixed, so you're only able to use the meat sack for Hunter activities, so I think that means no more sneaking in extra food through your pouches. Iritar range strength has been up to plus 60, so you get a little bit of bigger bang for your muck. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. 
Moonlight Potion now has a correct description, so instead of just talking about its defense, it also mentions the boost to attack and strength. If you're doing the Riveting Tail quest, you're no longer able to run away from a certain frog by walking away. He will stay aggro whenever you come back into range. I also tried this. It's not that he de-aggroed on me. He just completely despawned until I came back and then he reappeared. Worms are showing up on the Slayer Log. The stump in the oasis will no longer prevent you from taking an axe if you have a combat axe on you. The Varlamore City Teleport in the Portal Nexus now has the correct icon on it. The Pretzels and Fortis have had a reshuffle, so you're more likely to find them closer to a teleport. Also worth mentioning, if you talk to Mr. Sento here in between the two birds of Varlamore City, you can actually change Renu's appearance. Four more colors available than just the default green that everybody gets. You can also do the orange and green, pure orange, blue, and cyan. I think I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the blue. So we've also fixed an issue with Echo Boots losing charges in PvP. You can store Mix Hide within your POH costume room. Group Iron Men can actually use the shared Hunter Mixes and Butterfly within their own group. The clue scroll that needed you to have full Sunfire Fanatic armor has now been reduced to only need one piece to complete it. And the Sapphire Glacial Butterflies will actually correctly boost defense whenever they're released. And earlier on, they fixed the bug with Sunfire runes, giving more XP than intended, but they do want to make them a bit more generous, so they've gone ahead and doubled the runecraft XP that you get from crafting them. So hopefully that'll be a way to keep the Sunfire Splinters having a value, meaning that I don't see Wave 1 of Colosseum farming coming down in its GP for a bit of a while, and even then, it'll still probably end up being about 3 to 4 mil an hour. We also get a sneak peek of next week's update being the Undead Pirate Change to the Wilderness, We'll cover this when it actually comes out. And finally, in our other changes, my favorite section of the blog. Apparently there was a bug that came out with the addition of Arlamore that made the Fang not roll correctly in its accuracy during the Tombs of a Masket. Glad I haven't been doing that recently. If you try to chop the mahogany and teak trees within Karamja's little grove and you don't have enough favor around the village to help, you will now actually be warned of this before trying to give the 100 sticks to enter. Iola Soul Dark Chests will no longer let you know you could have received a medium clue every single time you open them up. Equipping a Light Bearer is no longer going to reset your special attack energy recharge. They actually gave attention to the Werewolf Agility course. The one that collects the stick will no longer wander around as much. Nice to see old content still getting fixed up. And if you're doing Dwarf Cannon and you need extra replacements from Logoff, he will now give you as many as you need rather than just one. We get to finish off like normal with our PvP world rotations. Feel free to give the video a pause and look over it if this is of interest for you. And that's gonna end off the blog for April 3rd. Mostly nice to see some expected fixes, but if this is like normal, this might be the last tweaks to Varlamore that we're gonna see for a while. But Jagex, whatever happened to the Sunfire Fanatic armor being supposed to be obtained during the lower waves of the Colosseum? Why is that not a thing? Barely better than Proselyte. Takes about 200 Colosseum completions to obtain on average. Doesn't seem right. Comment highlight for the video goes to Solus the Sun. I know I'm pretty good at presenting information, but I am still shocked to have gained even a small following of almost 2,000 subscribers. It's not really something I ever expected to be able to happen. But here we are. Subscribe if you're not. Also help me out with a like on the video and leave a comment about any of your favorite parts of the update or anything you would like to see changed coming soon. If you want to go above and beyond to support me, feel free to become a channel member. That's probably the easiest way. I would appreciate any tier. But like always, have a good day you guys.